Well, when I was younger, my dad, who has no connection to film whatsoever, he bought a, like a, a VHS camera, one of those big old bricks, you know, and he just had it in my face all the time. And I hated it. And then he plugged it into the TV, and then I saw myself dancing on the TV, and for some reason I thought I was on TV, I think. And I just fell in love with it. So I started just shooting and stuff. Um, I played sports through, throughout high school, uh, throughout my life. And film was kind of the only things I did. And I uh, wasn't going to go to no school, you know, five foot and nothing, a hundred and nothing. So I needed a career path. And um, I chose film, you know. And, and what inspires me to, you know, to be a director, um, it's not so much about being a director or being like this, you know, um, person of, you know, fame and glitz and glamour. For me, it was more about um, raising a family and being able to support a family or support whoever, uh, you know, myself and my wife, my kids, you know, when that time comes. Um, and it was, I could have been a janitor. I could have been a, you know, a gardener. It, it really didn't matter to me. Um, I just wanted to make sure I gave it, you know, 100% of myself. And so all these people who say, oh, I want to be a director because of Stanley Kubrick and you know Martin Scorsese. Like I hadn't, I didn't even know a director's name until I went to college. Um, you know, so for me it was just, uh, it was a way to be able to support myself and support you know my future family. So that's yeah. still what inspires me today. Um, the camaraderie, I think more than anything. Um, you know, playing sports, you hear about these these athletes who retire and. They talk about the things that they miss the most is the camaraderie, being around the guys, messing around, playing, joking, you know, bleeding, sweating, like going an extra mile for that guy who's next to you. And, and for me, that's, that's what I enjoy the most, you know? And, um, you know, I'm not a director who just walks on set and sits in my chair and like doesn't talk to anybody. I, I try to talk to all the guys, the lowest of, you know, uh, you know the PAs, the, the grips, the, you know, everybody, and just let everyone know who I am and, and just you know, try to keep everything loose, and you know, because at the end of the day, those guys are doing just as much work as I am, and they're not getting recognized for it. So I just want to let them know someone's being, you know, someone cares and recognizes what they do. Um, but I think that's my favorite part, you know, meeting all these new people and and seeing these people go to bat for you and and willing. Obviously, they're doing it for themselves as well. But when you're in that that moment on set within that day, twelve hours, two days, three days, however it goes, you know, you guys are a team, and um, and that's kind of my favorite part. Yeah. The most challenging thing, I think, is, well, it's kind of two things, but I think the, 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 the biggest challenge um, was kind of losing myself, uh, losing myself out here in, in Hollywood. And I don't think it's necessarily Hollywood. You can be anywhere. Uh, losing yourself as far as I forgot why I started, you know what I mean? And I got out here and, and I started getting... You know, at that time, Twitter was big, and you get verified, you get these followers, you get all this stuff, and then you, you're hanging out with these celebrities, and you kind of forget what it is that you're actually, what's your purpose, you know what I mean? I didn't come out here to, to get 50,000 followers. That wasn't my, that, that's not paying my rent, that's not helping me, you know what I mean? And that's not why I came out here, but I got lost in that because it, it became a, an ego booster. It became something that I could, I could literally latch onto and, and I could wait and feel good about it every day as opposed to the longer road of, you know, being a director or just kind of doing what I'm doing as far as um, paying the bills and, and, and maintaining myself so that I can sustain a family and, and a wife and things like that. So it was just a quick fix. And, you know, for a couple of years, I just completely got lost in what I was actually doing. And, and I wanted to be this director. I wanted to be all this stuff. And, and, and then, you know, eventually I came back around full circle and I realized what was really important. So I think that was a a big struggle there, and I think everybody goes through it at, at some point, whether it's big or small. Um, and then another thing is just the the consistency. I mean, work's never consistent. You're a freelancer. Um, I did work at a, a record company uh, where I was getting paid salary. Um, I quit because it just wasn't for me. I was I was wearing a suit and tie every day, and it just just didn't work out. So, freelancing, you know. Some days you work, some days you don't. Some months you get five jobs, some months you get two jobs. Some months you don't work at all, some months you work all month. Um, and I'm a guy of, of routine, so it's a little hard to get used to, but you know, there's not much you can do about it, you know? It's part of the game. Thank you for watching A Wise Way. Subscribe to stay updated, share to pass the knowledge, or view our other videos on the left.